David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. In this episode of Paratech 10, and it's part of Mission Impossible, Uncle Tony's Mission Impossible project, in which Andy, myself, and Charlie are working hard to support. What I'm going to do in this episode is kind of an admission of guilt. I think I may have steered you guys not quite in the right direction on my race rod preparation video. Putting the... No, I'll put it up this side. It's more space. Uh, episode there, and you'll see what I mean. What I did when I started showing you how to lighten the rods, I picked a rod which was one of the best machined out of all the rods I had, unknowingly. The hole in the, the pin bore in the little end was the most centrally located one that there was. So I lightened it, assuming that all the others were the same. Mistake. They were up to a sixteenth of an inch out. Now, that may sound like that's bad, but we know these rods are very strong in stock form. And when I looked at some of the rods, the pin offset was very substantial. Now, I want you to think about an old saying. The strength of the chain is the strength of the weakest link. Well, if we've got an offset bore, as I'm showing in that uh, little diagram there, the pin bore is offset, then the weakest part is the thinnest part. So, if we round it all off to the thinnest part, right, all we've done is really make the rod so it now can break in any direction, right, instead of breaking at that one spot. Now, it's not quite like the uh, uh, weakest link in the chain, right? But that analogy applies probably about 75%. So what I did was find the worst rod and remachined everything to that spec. And I thought, well, I might as well show you guys finishing off the little end. So this is what I've done here. Doing that chamfer around either end of the uh, pin bore didn't cut much weight off, about two grams a side, but that's four grams lighter than it would have been. So every little bit helps. And just for reference, machining each rod took a little longer than I'm showing here. I did time it, and it's about 50 minutes per rod. That's assuming that's from loading one on to loading the next one on a complete cycle. So, for all eight rods, plus a coffee break, turned out to be pretty much eight hours work. That's just on the little ends. Beams to do next. This shot should demonstrate what I was talking about earlier. You see how it hasn't cleaned up. This rod here was the one with the worst forging to pin offset. So machining the rest down to that level shouldn't decrease the strength of the rod by any significant degree. Whatever it is reduced by, we will more than make up for it by the reduction in the reciprocating weight. Here's the pin ends of all the rods, all machined. Like I said, there's over eight hours work in that, but look how nicely it comes out. 
Now then, the thing we've got to do now is to start working on the beams and get those up to scratch. I think by the time we're done, we'll have a rod as strong and as light as the powder metallurgy small block Chevy rod. That dude went to 8,000 RPM in one of my circle track motors. This is how the small end of the rod looks now. This is on the rod that I had so-called finished. Now, we've taken quite a bit of metal off here, but this is where, these edges here is where the thin bit is, right? So I machined that down like that, so that we've, it doesn't need to be stronger. And lastly, which I was going to do anyway, I chamfered the edges there. These edges, the corner, does not handle any, um, does not do any load sharing uh, to any extent, so we can remove it. Now, the good news is that although the rod may be slightly weaker than it was before, it's made of the same material as a small block Chevy rod, but it's way stronger than a small block Chevy rod. Point here. I'm talking about the old steel forgings Chevy rods, not the powder metallurgy ones that they had in the from, I don't know what it was, 89 on. Now, the um, so there's going to be some of you who say, well, you might have taken too much off. Well, not really. I've just taken it down to the weakest point and after it's been shot peened this rod is still going to be capable of well over 7500. Now how much lighter did it get? Took off n nearly 20 grams, well 18 grams more so originally we'd lighten that little end 43 grams now it's 43 uh, 61, 61 grams lighter, so that's good. Now, a point I want to make here is, remember we had a competition to guess uh, how much I'd lightened, how many grams I'd been able to take off the, uh, the, the pin end, right? Well, two people got it right. Well, that's two. And <clears throat> the person who got it right first has never responded. We took 43 grams off. Now, if that guy doesn't respond in the next, say, month, I'm going to throw that prize open to the guy who was second in it. So you guys just go back and check and see who was second in that rod lightning deal, right? Now, it's a bit, bit disorganized, this, but what I'm trying to do here is to find a way that we can offer uh, uh, prizes like this um, for guessing this that or the other and that's because it's kind of my way of saying thank you guys for buying all those books that you do right I don't want you to stop buying them so buy more but you know it's all of those sales put me in a position of being one of the world's top uh, published automotive hot rod tech writers in fact, I've been told I'm the most widely published by a big margin, but hey, who cares? Just so long as you keep buying my books and they serve a useful purpose. Right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the crankshaft and show you some more lightning on the crankshaft. It's a slow process as far as doing videos is concerned, but it's getting done. Uncle Brian, please note, it's getting done. I don't know how easy you can see it, but I'm grinding this piece here to follow this machining line round here. This, is, this surface here is machined, right? Just where that mark is there is as low as I'm going to come with this. And I'm going to blend that all the way in into here. Then I'm going to be working on this here. I'm going to try and get this form here to match what's there. Next, it's a case of handling our grinder very carefully and rounding off the uh, depression 
right next to the area that I indicated with the uh, pointer just now. This is a tricky job, so do not try and rush it. If you're new to this, the chances are you will slip and grind on the bearing journal unless you have an old bearing shell and taped it up, as I described earlier. Just so that you're aware, this is probably the trickiest part of the crank. It requires a really steady hand. But, fear of damaging the bearing usually helps you get the skill quickly. Now I'm using the carbide burr here to dress that radius uh, in the area I'm working there. Now, it might look, not look like there's much metal coming off, but trust me, the chips are flying off so damn fast here that you can't see them. Make sure you do have goggles on because Otherwise, you will get something in your eye. You'll quickly see how this uh, emery roll transforms the, the uh, shape at that uh, area that I'm working on. If you took a look at it just as I started, and then when I stop emerying here, you'll see that the form's taking shape nicely. Well, here's the corner roughed out. Points to note here is, make sure you don't have a hump just here. Start the radius right down about here and continue it to about here. Now, we are gonna put a small radius just to break the edge on here, but we don't want oil to be going into the area that the rods are sweeping out. So next move here is to get there with the uh, cutter and do the final shaping on it and then polish it. And here it is after cuttering. You'll notice that I've got this radius continued all down to here and then it blends in here. Try and not get it too much of a hump here. This is really needs to be slightly concave or flat blend it in here and like I said we're going to dress this edge here. Next though I'm going to use the emery roll on this here so that you can see the form. Well here's the form fairly much finished. may require a bit of touching up here and there but as you can see the windage radius is mostly on the outside third of the weight. I'm measuring it from here, right? Because this is going fastest. But I've taken off quite a bit of metal here, right? Because it's just along for the ride. And uh, that's going to help a little bit as well. Right, notice how it's blended in here. And no humps there. Right, so that's your target. Now I'm going to tackle the other side of this throw and that is shape all this as per this side here and start on this side. This is the side that will be cutting into the air so it is more critical than the side we've just done. Well here's a close-up of the uh, throw done. And you'll note the polish I've got on the, uh, the bore of the crank cross drill. That's there because it's difficult to shot peen inside that hole. So we need the inside of that hole to be polished so that it has minimal chance of any serious stress risers. The next job to do will be to knife edge the leading edge of the counterweight at the points I'm just arrowing here. I think I'm going to do this on the mill. It's totally doable with a grinder, but it's hard work for me to spend that time holding that grinder and standing up. So I'm going to sit down and do it on the mill. Well, I guess that brings us to the end of this episode of uh, Paratech 10, part 15 of Uncle Tony's Mission Impossible. Now, don't forget, your subscriptions here means that we increase our audience, which means when we raffle this engine off, we will have a bigger audience from which, which will participate, which means hopefully 
more tickets sold, which means more money for those kids at St. Jude's. So, just do it. Subscribe. Thank you for watching.